Hello, so today we're doing uh, storage devices and looking at how different storage devices compare in terms of speed and also their capacity. And so what you'll be expected to do is most of you will uh, just simply make a chart to compare the speed and the capacity. And I'm suggesting today that we're going to use Google uh, Spreadsheets instead of using Microsoft Excel. Um, the reason for this is that it sort of compares the data it allows you to add labels onto your scatter graph, which you'll have to do in this exercise, which you can't do in Microsoft. Um, the, some of you will extend this uh, project by actually making a chart to compare the cost per gigabyte for each of the devices. In order to do that, you'll need to calculate the cost per gigabyte in a separate column, so adding an extra column in there. However, that won't be covered in this tutorial. You'll be expected to do that independently. And so, uh, the task to start it up, I'd probably, before you go any further, I'd like to ask you whether you know roughly the capacity of a, a hard disk drive, whether you have got any idea about what other device that might be about 32 gigabytes um, and cost about 10 pounds. And finally, if you've got any idea of the cost of magnetic tape, if you don't know, Pause now, go Google it, um, and think the answers, and I'll give you the answers in a moment. So, coming back to the data at hand, I'm going to copy this across, I'm going to open up Google uh, Documents. Now, in order to do that, you will need to be logged in um, into, into Google Chrome. If you don't know how to do that, then ask your neighbour. Um, and you will need to cr open up Google Drive might require a little bit of setting up if you haven't done so ever done so already and you will create a spreadsheet now Google Drive is great because you can access it from any place it keeps all your documents in one place for you so I'm going to paste this data in um, I'm going to make sure that it's all white in the background I think and then I'm going to go through these ones that were highlighted before so um, how big is a hard disk drive? Well, that's a terabyte. A terabyte is a thousand gigabytes. This here, you might call that a USB stick. Some people call that flash memory or flash stick or a memory stick. Um, and then magnetic tape generally costs about 20 pounds, maybe even less than that. Um, and so, before you can create a graph of this, if you were to highlight these, now, I might be completely wrong here and find out that Google does is very whizzy and can work this out for itself click chart um, and charts it's not actually allowing you to select any of these other charts because the data it says isn't the correct format the reason for that is that all this data here Google is interpreting as text and not numbers and the reason for that is that there are in here we've got all the units and so we need to get the units out and place them at the top generally go for the smallest unit capacity so here we've got megabytes that allows you to add a logarithmic scale which will something we've come on to in a little bit so if you need to know you now need to convert all of these out of megabytes into terabytes or gigabytes um, do that independently and then watch me as I do it later um, you'll need to be aware that a gigabyte is a thousand uh, megabytes and a terabyte is a million megabytes so pause it now have a go and then see the answers in a moment so I said that a terabyte was a million megabytes, so just check that that's right. That should have six noughts at the end. One, two, three, four, five, six, perfect. A gigabyte, uh, so is a thousand megabytes, so that should be five, twelve thousand. Uh, this here should be thirty-two thousand. One, two, three. Uh, this here should be four thousand seven hundred. Uh, this here will be six hundred fifty megabytes, it stays the same. And this here should be uh, 40,000. Perfect. Um, this one here, um, they're all the same unit, so I just sort of need to find and replace them. So delete megabytes per second from each of these. And the quickest way to do that is to click Edit, go to Find and Replace, go for MB per second and replace with nothing, and then click Replace All. Um, I just want to copy that because I'm going to place it into the... Um, access speeds column now and space we'll paste it in um, and then finally I want to set this up so that it's uh, all equal column sizes and such perfect so now um, I'm going to add a chart um, for this so I'm going to select the data 
going back to the, the chart that I want to create, I want to compare the capacity to the speed. So the type of chart you're probably looking for is some sort of scatter where capacity is on the one axis, speed is on the other axis, and then these uh, the names of the devices are labelled um, on each of the on each of the uh, points. And so, uh, if I highlight the data, if I want, so I just want the first three columns, and then I'm going to go to insert and da -da 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 chart. Now here, it actually gives you some recommended charts that you can browse through. Um, I quite like this chart here because it's got everything I want. It's got the x-axis, the y-axis, and the labels. I'm just going to look, go through and look at charts and see if there's any scatters. Now it's saying that it won't allow me to do a scatter. Two or more columns are required, and they all must be numeric. So basically, the bubble allows you to um, allows you to place the names of each device on in the circles, which I think is fine. I don't think people need. The purpose of this chart is not so that people get very accurate readings, it's more that they can compare the different devices. Um, and so I'm going to go to Customize now. Um, I want to change the chart title to um, Store Rage Devices. Um, I want to maximize it because I think that gives it a, sort of a nicer look and feel and places the title within the data. Um, Scrolling down, um, I want to put access titles on each of these. So this is uh, size in uh, megabytes. Is that right? The horizontal axis. Yep, that's right. It is the size. Um, I probably want to set a min and max. So the min should be naught, and the max should be uh, I want to one, two, three, four, five. Let's see how that looks. That's nice, and we can fit these in. Um, Allow bounds to hide the data. No, I don't want that to happen. So I feel that here these are disappearing off the bottom. And so potentially, what I might look to do is introduce a logarithmic, logarithmic scale on the end. Let's see how that looks. That's better. So I can see all of them now um, and spread them out sort of more evenly. And so the logarithmic scale basically means that it goes up by 10 each time. Um, so I think if I increase that to maybe 15,000, let me see what happens here. That's perfect. That's brilliant. And so we've got a, um, you notice that the label's here, size in megabytes. Um, and then I'm going to go down and or need to drop back up and just format the left vertical axis here. So the title of this axis will be a speed in megabits per second and the um, I don't feel that I need to set a max and min on here because it seems to be it seems to be working fine um, and in fact I feel that it's pretty much all done and um, maybe I'd want to um, format the bubbles a little bit make them a little bit more opaque 20% and um, maybe remove the border color off them um, and Maybe make these, um, make the labels a little bit bigger, potentially. Um, and so there it is, completed. Once you've done and you've been through all of the bits and bobs, you can click Insert. Um, and um, move to its own sheet, maybe. So now we've got this chart and we've got all of the different devices. It's worthwhile taking a moment to... Um, to go through and talk about the individual devices and how they compare. What you'll notice is that the CD-ROM is the slowest and uh, has the least capacity. I suppose its key advantage there is that it's actually very, very cheap. It's the cheapest of all of them. Um, it's good for doing things like distributing software and distributing CDs. That's why it's still used for that. It's in distributing music. Um, a DVD is pretty much twice the capacity, of, sorry, five times the capacity. Um, and so it's good for doing things like archiving personal documents, like family photos and those sorts of things. And DVDs are used to distribute films simply because you can't actually fit a whole film onto a CD-ROM. Um, magnetic tape has a quite high storage capacity, although it's got a very low st uh, access speed. The access speed here is the um, is actually a little bit misleading because uh, the way that a magnetic tape 
um, is used is it's called so it's got serial access. That means that you kind of have to wind it forward and back like VHS cassettes, and so it can actually take take a while to access specific data. All that, and so it's mainly just used to back up where you have a sort of start to finish operation. Um, and so it's somewhat unfair to compare it to a hard disk drive in terms of speed because actually um, it wouldn't you wouldn't be able to use it as a hard disk drive because with a hard disk drive you need to go to specific files which a hard disk drive can do within you know nanoseconds whereas a magnetic tape would actually take a, a couple of seconds to get that um, and then comparing uh, these so you'll see that solid state device has got a much faster access time than a hard disk and so basically they can be used in very similar ways they're both used in for internal storage in your uh, personal computer a solid state drive should be used for the things that you want to find use the most like the operating system or Microsoft Word for example or Internet Explorer um, whereas the hard disk drive is then used for everything else the, um, you'll find that a solid state drive is actually quite expensive per, meg per gigabyte compared to a hard disk drive and so you're actually quite limited in the amount of megabytes or gigabytes that you can use within them um, USB stick is still used largely because of its portability solid state devices and hard drives are internal to the computer whereas USB is easy to transfer between different uh, computers and different sort of platforms as well the, the USB is by definition a universal device and so you're, it's principally there for transporting documents between computers um, so now once you've created this you can save your work um, storage devices um, click OK um, and you can then have a go at the plenary activity at the end and be sure to upload uh, the URL into the upload space um, on the virtual learning environment. Uh, to do that, I believe you can click publish chart um, and click OK and then you've got a, uh, an interactive chart. Click done Oops. and then I believe if you click share you'll need to change this to public on the web and click save and then it's here so this is the URL and you can copy and paste that into the hand in folder under lesson one so I hope that's clear and um, leave some comments below if you have any problems otherwise uh, thank you for watching